Christmas service. Yes, it's always good to be here, isn't it? Nice and warm. Had the heating on nice and early, just like my house. So it's really good. Fantastic. But it's great to see you all this morning. And everyone online, brilliant to see you. Great. And I, I'm sure, Adam, you must be a little bit disappointed this year because, of course, because of COVID, we can't be doing our Christmas experience in Penland. I mean, those were the days when we were all shoulder to shoulder. Do you remember that once a long time ago? But you used to love to dress up as Santa's little helper. Are you I'll be honest with you. I am disappointed. I'm a bit gutted, to be honest. It's not the same going to Lidl's dressed up as an elf, is it? Or going for your haircut dressed up as an elf. So... It's very difficult this year, but because of course we got the COVID elf and safety restrictions now, Aww. so it's very difficult to go out there and be an elf these days. And I'm always a little bit on edge at the prospect of having to go into elf isolation. <laughs> so you know, it's very difficult this year. Let me tell you. Yes, I did put a lot of thought into those one-liners. Well, I'm going to see if I can match you there. This is one for the children. So, um, do you know why the pirates went into lockdown? No idea, Sarah. Because the R rate had risen. <laughs> like a, oh. but here's, let's try one for the adults. What's Dominic Cum Cummings' favourite Christmas song? Driving Home for Christmas. Ooh, <laughs> controversial, controversial. <laughs> and for an English girl, you roll your R's very well. <laughs> I then. tried, I tried. Okay, well, we, it's so lovely to have you with us, and we're going to really enjoy celebrating Christmas this morning. So we're going to stand in a moment for our first carol, um, which is Joy to the World. And during this carol, our little ones will go out. So if you have a naught to two who'd like to go out to creche, it's through that door down the end on the right for some great activities. Now, threes to sixes will go out in this song. You've got a great Christmas treat in store with Hannah and Christy this morning. So let's stand together. And are we going to pray before we go into our first carol? Let's stand. Just to remind you, if you're in the room, uh, we're all COVID safe here, two meters apart and in masks, so we can't sing, but we can enjoy the music. But if you're at home, you can sing your heart out if you're in the room uh, at home. Okay, Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can gather together at Christmas. We thank you that you came to bring life to this world. And Lord, we ask that you'll be with us this morning and bless everyone watching, everyone in the room too, that we know your Holy Spirit with us. Amen. Amen.
Yes, Lord, we thank you for this message of joy in this season, that you bring joy into the world through your love, Jesus. We're grateful to you, Lord, particularly in this season of time and all that's going on in the world around us and our daily experience. We're just so grateful to you, Lord, that we can find peace and hope in and through you in our lives. Amen. Amen. Great. Please do all sit down. That's great. And... Um, you know, it is fantastic, those words. They're written by Isaac Watts in 1719, who, and who would have thought 300 years later, we're still singing those encouraging words. And what I love, if you remember that sentence where it talks about, let every heart prepare him room. And that is a great response as us as human beings, because we've all got a heart, and we've all got a life experience. And Isaac Watts was writing an encouragement to us as people, to find the space in our hearts for God, to recognize and prepare our hearts. And sometimes, I don't know about you, what you're all like in preparing for times, so when it's really busy and life is at a push and at a pace, to sit down, to respond to God and prepare our hearts to know him is such a great encouragement from Isaac. So good words. So brilliant. Let's just remember those things in this season. Yeah, that's good, especially the, the, year that, <clears throat> excuse me, the year that we've had. It's been a crazy year in lockdown, hasn't it? And we've been thinking of all the different things, homeschooling, working from home, Zoom calls, all the different things that we've been juggling at this time. And for us as Cornerstone, um, we, we had to go online with our services, but we're very much a community. So uh, we still carried on being a community and being a community together, which was really wonderful. But putting our services online was a real challenge. Uh, the filming learning how to film into the eye of an iPad. The Challenging, film, yes, What's and you would think just do like a church meeting, it would be like very safe, wouldn't you? Honestly, I could have done with a stunt man do, doing our filming. I got stuck up a tree, all right, and the tree was only about that high. This is one of those, I think, I'm very high up here, but actually, you know, me saved me with a stepladder, thankfully. I almost uh, drove over my foot with a lawnmower. And then I also filmed in our greenhouse and dehydrated, it was in there for about an hour. And then the, the topping for me was helping Sean make pasties. And she forgot to tell me that the pot that I'd be touching would be boiling hot. <laughs> so I was like, oh. ow. So, yes. So, filming ourselves was really hard. It was really a challenge. So, it's great to, like, finally be in the room together. It's really brilliant. But we've made a little film for you of kind of life in Cornerstone that I hope will resonate with your life and how you've experienced 2020 as well. And this is Cornerstone, Cornerstone Lockdown Wins and Fails 2020. And therefore, I urge you to stay at stay home. home. Together, we can we keep, keep Wales, Wales safe. safe. We will beat it to get together. Morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great morning. Lovely to share this time with you. And welcome again to Cornerstone Online. And welcome once again to Cornerstone Online. Hi, boys and girls. It's great to see you again. We hope you're ready. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, oh, oh. Enjoy. We can't You're hear you. Mute. 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 Press the unmute button. Oh, I think you've got it. I'm on the TV. So that was... Very good service. I therefore pronounce them husband and wife.
Well, we've been pleased to have so much fun and love and care um, as a community, as a church, even though it's been a really tough and crazy year. And um, it reminds me how in Mark chapter 4 in the Gospels, there's a story there recorded of how the disciples were also in a storm. And they had been with Jesus. Jesus had been teaching all day long. And then he said, let's get into the boat and go to the other side. And other boats left as well. And they're on the Sea of Galilee. And as they um, went off, Jesus was so tired after sleeping all day that he just fell asleep on a pillow in the stern of the boat. And it tells us that a terrible storm kicked off and all the disciples were afraid. Now, when fishermen are afraid in a storm, you know you're in trouble. I remember once we were on a plane, and you know when there's terrible turbulence and the plane is dropping up and down. Now, it's when the air stewardess burst into tears, you know you're in trouble. So when the actual disciples, who were mostly, you know, many of them were fishermen, when they were frightened of the storm, you know it was bad. And they went and they woke Jesus up uh, because they were so frightened of all the craziness going on around them. And this is what happened next. So out of that terrible storm, Jesus stood up and he said, calm, peace, be still. And when we come to celebrate Christmas together, we know that Jesus came into the world to bring peace. And our world this year, it's like being in a storm. It's been unpredictable. We've been a little bit frightened. But Jesus came into the world to bring peace to our lives. And this Christmas, as we come to gather and celebrate together, let's take on Jesus' peace that is a real tangible peace that is a gift for us. He doesn't want us to be afraid. He wants us to know that he is in charge. And if the disciples are just like looked at him asleep they would have known it's going to be okay he said we'd get to the other side but they panicked they were like why aren't you panicking like us but Jesus knew that it would be okay and he brings his peace to us and so as we come to uh, hear our next song it's all about Jesus mission and coming to the world at Christmas why he came and when he grew to be a man how he would come to save us so if the band would like to come and play us the next song
was moved for good and for the land had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored and the church of Christmas Day. Thank you that you died and rose again so that we could have a relationship with you. Amen. Four separate stories intrinsically woven. Four stories pan out, all four chosen for a particular reason, to show us a subtle message this festive old season. We start with a guy called Zach. He's a priest. Not the biggest cast of nativity character to say the least, but he is there. You see, him and his wife Liz are righteous and fair, totally content in life except for one thing. You see, Liz and Zach, they couldn't have offspring. And at this point in the story, well, the thought of conception, with the body clock against them, it was just out of the question. Now, Zach's in the temple and this angel makes an entrance just to the right of the burning incense. The angel says to Zach, don't be afraid. Your father in heavens, you had the prayer that you prayed. Start kicking out the spare room and make it a nursery. Get carved in the cradle because you're having a baby. For what's on earth in Jesus' birth holds for all eternal worth. Next. A short after role in the nativity is Liz's cousin and her name's Mary. She receives an unexpected angelic meeting and receives an unexpected angelic greeting. Angel Gabriel shows up and catches her off guard. Don't be afraid, says the angel. Don't be alarmed. So bowled over by God's message through the angelic visit, Mary learns she'll give birth to God's son through the spirit. For what's on earth in Jesus' birth holds for all eternal worth. With his other half pregnant, Joe's calling off the wedding. See, he thinks the love of his life has been in someone else's bed in, but he doesn't flip out, he doesn't cause a riot. He decides it's best to do the dumping on the quiet. But then a message in his dream would change the rest of his life. An angel says, don't be afraid of taking Mary as your wife. For what's on earth in Jesus' birth holds for all eternal worth. Next, the hilly turf, with a sheep and the shearer where a shepherd looks up and sees an angel appear. The shepherds, they're stunned from the shock, but they're still conscious. An angel tells him, it's all right, there's no need to get anxious. Don't be afraid, don't be scared. A king's born in the stable with hay as his bed. For what on earth in Jesus' birth holds for all eternal worth. And so in each of the stories, the same phrase laid, a message from God, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Easy to say, not always easy to be, when we're surrounded by pain on hashtag or TV. And it's not easy in a world where brokenness has thrived. But the truth is, love came to town when a certain baby arrived. Don't be afraid is the softly spoken sentence behind the scenes of the nativity. Don't be afraid, for the birth of God's son can break the chains of captivity. He came to restore a relationship that in Eden was once frayed. But his arrival is good news which speaks. Do not be afraid. A 
Let's give Di a round of applause. So our good friend Di there, he's picking out four characters from the Christmas story that all had the same message, do not be afraid. And it was amazing the part that all these people played in a significant moment where Jesus would came, come to the world and change the world forever. And we see the angel coming to Zechariah and he was so shocked. And when the angel came to him and said, don't be afraid, your prayer has been heard. And of course, he became the father of John the Baptist who made the way for Jesus. And of course, the main character, Mary, Mary in the Christmas story, when the angel came to her with this incredible message that she would carry Jesus. And he said, don't be afraid. And she agreed to go ahead with this just crazy task that the responsibility would lie on her. And of course, Joseph, we heard how Joseph was confused how this had happened. And the angel came to him and said, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because she's conceived by the Holy Spirit. And lastly, on the, when Jesus was born, isn't it amazing that the angels came to the shepherd just to the real people working on the hills, not straight to King Herod or to the palace, but right there on the hills and said, don't be afraid because today good news has come for all people. And when Jesus came, it was good news for each and every one of us that he would bring peace and bring this amazing message all through every story. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And it's been an interesting year, but the message from the Lord to us is this. Do not be afraid because he is with us and he has a plan for us and he wants to give us his peace and encourage us never to be afraid because he's got it in hand. And so we're going to play another song now. And I love this song. The band are playing this song. Now to me, this James Morrison song, although it's 10 years old, it is like the song of 2020. It kind of sums up for me the COVID year 2020, wonderful world. And then after this, Julian will be coming to bring our Christmas talk. So let's enjoy the band now with James Morrison's Wonderful World. I've been down so low, people love me and they know they can tell something is wrong Like I don't belong Well, staring through a window Standing outside, they're just too happy to play tonight I wanna be like them But I'll mess it up again I tripped my way in dark
Thank you, Zoe and the band. Let's give them another round of applause. I think they've done a great job today. Well, good, Merry Christmas, everybody. Good morning. And to everybody online, so glad you can join us today. And uh, we're so pleased to see you all this morning. Well, what a crazy year it's been, 2020. Um, in January, as a family, we were, and as a church, we were looking forward to three weddings early January. Um, but we had to bring them all early. Matthew and Precious got married. They were due to be married in March. They had to bring it early. And there was just a few of us who married them in the church here. Social distance, very, very few people indeed. And then Chloe and Russo and B and Darko. We had to bring their marriage early. When we heard that lockdown was happening, we got a text. Can we get married tonight? <laughs> what, tonight? Yes, tonight. Because if they don't get married tonight, who knows how long lockdown would last. And now we do know how long lockdown would last. And they would have been able to be, see one another. They'd be distant. So we got hold of our Tracy, who's one of the registrars in the church here, and her husband, Robert. And we all came down. And there was only a handful of us in the cafe area, and we had to marry B and Darko and Russo and uh, Chloe before midnight. And we were down here at 11 o'clock at night doing speed marriage. <laughs> and it was really interesting. I mean, Russo's parents were living in Bahrain, and they had to wake them up, and they watched over FaceTime. I remember when we did Matthew and Precious's wedding, we said, who gives this woman to this man and Precious's father in London with all the family all across the UK. He stood up in his living room, suited up like we all were in, in the cafe. I do. And it was a, an interesting, romantic, crazy, unexpected. I think the highlight was because Russo's ring hadn't come through for that time. It was like, with this Coke can ring, I take you, Russo, to be my husband. It was an interesting, funny, romantic, and wonderful time, and something surely to tell the children and the grandchildren. And, uh, well, what an experience. So what an amazing time. Diaries have been cancelled, flights have been cancelled, holidays have been cancelled, schools have been cancelled, we've been Zoomed out, we've been doing church online, goodness me. How difficult that has been. Take one, take 22, take 32. Absolutely exhausting. But we got there in the end. I don't know about you. I'm sure you've experienced it too. There have been times with this lockdown and this year we've been absolutely fed up. And there's other times we've been hopeful and had, had our hope renewed. And that is just the way it's gone. But there have been moments, haven't there? where there have been silver linings in this cloud of difficulty. I remember on VE Day, when we were just observing people's warmth and friendliness, and I'm sure you've seen this, the, the, the friendliness dial has gone up. On VE Day in our estate, this guy just randomly got out his guitar, his PA system, on the garden, and started singing songs of the 70s and 80s and 90s that everybody loved. Everybody poured out of their home, Socially distancing, of course, and enjoying in the brilliant and surprising sun that we had in Swansea, this incredible entertainment. And it happened to be the same day that Russo and Chloe were due to be married in May. And so we decided to put a table out, get a cake, balloon, champagne, and have a reception for four in the garden. And as we did this, this lady walked past who was a professional photographer and began to take professional photographs of this wedding reception for four and gave them to us for free. The kindness of people this year has been wonderful and really encouraging. And I was so pleased when my gym opened because uh, I've got a very friendly gym. It's one of the reasons I enjoy going down there. So I, actually, I hate it for the exercise, but I enjoy it for the people. And I went down there and I noticed the friendly volume had gone up. 
significantly, and people who I hadn't even met or spoke to were talking and engaging. I'm sure you found this as well, because we're so people-starved for so long. And even recently, there was one gentleman who I hadn't seen before, because I normally go in the morning, but I went in the evening on this occasion, and he just came over, he's chatting to me, he's about my age. And every time he talked to me, he started mentioning how he'd got a, a pain in his shoulder for two years, he's struggling with the weights, every time he moves it is painful, the doctors had put two of these amazing supersonic injections in him and they weren't touching him. And uh, I said, is it really that bad? And he says, yes, it's really, really painful. And he'd just come back from the doctors and they said it's going to be a long time getting better. Two years uh, recovery. And he's had, sorry, he's had it for two years and it can be a long recovery because nothing was touching it. And I thought at that stage, do you know what? I would feel so bad if I just walked away right now because we've seen so many people healed of, of, of their conditions and of their sicknesses and their pains and injuries. So I said to him, hey, I know this might sound strange, but in my church we pray for people like that. And whilst I can't guarantee it, I wouldn't be surprised if you got healed if you allowed me to pray for you. Uh, this evening. It'll just take about 10 seconds if you want to. He goes, oh, yes, please. He was a really, really friendly, easygoing guy. He said, yes, please. He says, well, finish your workout, and I'll catch you at the end. And at the end, uh, I, I got him to say the simple prayer, Lord Jesus, heal me now. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command this pain to go. And I said, is it any better? And he went, nope. And I hope, oh, don't worry about that. Sometimes it'll take one or two goes. We prayed again, and on the second go, how's it now? Out of five, five out of ten, what's the improvement? We go, oh, oh, it's much better, it's five. So we prayed again. And on the third go, it was an eight. He said, oh, gosh, it's an eight. He goes, how does that work? Because he was surprised. And I said, well, you know, Jesus was alive 2,000 years ago, and he healed people, and he's alive today, because he came back from the dead, and he does the same time of stuff. He said, let's give it another go. Are you up for that? And he goes, yes. Prayed one more time, and all the pain had gone. He still didn't work out how it worked. To be honest, neither do I know how it really works. I just know that Jesus answers prayers in his name. And he went home, and he said, oh, you need to speak to my son. He's had operations and everything. And uh, it was, a, it was a, a wonderful evening. But that happened just because somebody was friendly. And uh, I'm sure you've been encouraged by the increased friendliness of people over these difficult periods. Another thing that we've noticed, haven't we, together, is the kindness of people. Take, for example, Thursday night, the NHS clap uh, for those heroic workers in the NHS, alongside the teachers, the key workers, shop workers, Amazon delivery drivers. Thank you, God, for them. And everyone who's just kept the wheels of our life turning and a little bit easier. And then we think of those who have been raising money for charity, like Captain Tom. I mean, gosh, that man zooming back and forth in his garden. What an amazing thing. And the body coach, Joe Wicks, raising money for the HSS. Kindness has been absolutely astonishing, hasn't it? But I've been reflecting on this, and... The reason why we are kind, even in adverse circumstances, is because the Bible says we're made in the image of God who is kind. And we are kind because we're made in his likeness. We love people because it says God is love and we are made in his likeness. Yes, we don't reflect it perfectly, but we have the capacity to be kind and the capacity to love and the capacity to reach out for people because that's who God is and we're made like him. And we have the capacity to be close to people because God does and he longs to be close to us just as we long to be close to others. And the thing is, and you know this as well as I do, the world can be brilliant around us. We go on our COVID walks and we look at the beautiful trees, especially when the summer was great and those green leaves on the trees were amazing. And the world can be beautiful. We can discover it afresh. But we, there's something missing if we can't have the people we love close to us. And everything can be brilliant on the outside, but on the inside, there's like something not quite right if we can't be close to the people we know and love. Just like the song that uh, Zoe and the band just sang by James Morrison, it says this, one line says this, it's a beautiful world, but I don't feel it right now because you're not here. 
And I'm sure that you'll agree with me that the COVID year has brought that sentiment right up to the surface for us time and time again, whether it's friends, children, grandchildren, grandparents. We've been longing to see people and there's been a discontent within our heart when, we, when so much can be good around us. And uh, Sarah and I, uh, like many of you, have done everything that we can safely and legally to connect with people. We've had so many coffees, cakes, meals in the back garden where we were able to, two, mis- uh, two meter distancing over tables. It's been virtually pouring down with rain. We've been juggling with parasols, trying to put them together so we can meet with people. It's even gone late into the evening where we got blankets and coats and woolly hats and scarves and extra socks. Who does that? Who does that and endures that kind of SAS military torture? We do it just because we want to be close to the people we know and we love. And we would go to any lengths to have a connection and be close. And nearly two, over 2,000 years ago, God demonstrated that love and that same heart that he's put within you and me. When 2,000 years ago, he went to any lengths to be close to us. He left heaven and came to earth. He reached out to earth so that you and I could have a relationship with us, uh, with God, and that he could be with us. When you look at those Christmas cards and it says, Emmanuel, look at the line before, before it, because it says, Emmanuel often, God with us, because that's what it means, God with us. God has come to us over 2,000 years ago in Jesus so that we could be close to him and he could be close to us. He's made a beautiful world to enjoy with us, but it just doesn't feel right for you or for him unless he's involved in our lives. God reaching down, reaching out, longing to be with you, and he came to us in the form of that baby. He risked it all at Christmas when he became so vulnerable so dependent upon a mum and dad and, a, and human beings. He did it so that he could grow to be a man at Easter and die on the cross. Why did he die on the cross? Well, he died on the cross for the way that we don't perfectly reflect his image. The ways that the times that we don't love as we want to. The times that we aren't as kind as we wish we could be. The times that we don't live up to our expectations for in our own eyes, let alone other people's eyes. He did it to forgive us and remove us, uh, remove that and set us free so that we could actually know the presence of God, helping us in life, forgiving us for the times we don't perfectly reflect his image of kindness and love in our lives to others. And also giving us the assurance of heaven when we die. Now, as I've chatted to people throughout this year, and I'm sure you've found the same, one of the big fears in this COVID year has been a fear of dying. And it's again brought to the surface of what happens when I die? Where do I go? And there's been an increased uh, questioning and searching around this. I've got a very good friend of Sarah and myself called John Burke. And he wrote this amazing book called Imagine Heaven. It's a a Times bestseller, New York Times bestseller. And he interviewed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people across the world from all different types of backgrounds and circumstances. And these were people who had had near-death experiences. They died, gone to heaven, and come back because their time to stay there wasn't yet. And he analyzed them, and then he compared their stories to the Bible. And, he, and it was absolutely remarkable. One, how consistent people's experience was from all over the world in different circumstances and different generations and different backgrounds. And how close they were to what the Bible teaches and explains to us what heaven is like. It's an absolutely eye-opening book, and I would encourage you to buy it. It's astounding, encouraging, and astonishing. One of the things that nearly everybody talks about, having been to heaven and come back, is the beauty of heaven. They talk on how green and living the grass is, 
the flowers, the rivers, the skies, the colors. They even talk about how you can see colors that you have never even seen before. Can you imagine that? Well, it's difficult to imagine, but they all talk about it. And the music. And all they, they say how they're greeted with people that they know. People who have surrendered their lives to Jesus. And they're greeted sometimes by angels, but sometimes by people that they know. And they all meet with Jesus. And, it's, and they say, Jesus and all of heaven is like living with love. And they are totally embraced with love. And so, there's no need to fear. And God doesn't want you to fear life after death because we can have the assurance of forgiveness and heaven and this amazing future waiting for us. This year was a challenging year for Sarah, myself and our family as my mum had been bedridden for the whole year. And just a few weeks ago, we were at her bedside when she passed and she went to be with Jesus. She had an incredibly strong faith. And one of the things that we noted is that she was not frightened of dying. And often, there she would be at the bedside, and I would go in each lunchtime and, and feed her lunch because she couldn't feed herself. And I would put on worship music from our morning services, just like you've heard this morning. And whenever I did, she, her eyes would light up. She would glow with delight. And it was as if she was caught up in the presence of Jesus himself. It was sometimes so amazing. I'd be frightened to look around just in case like Jesus had walked into the room and she could see him, but I couldn't. It was absolutely astonishing, but she never feared death at all. I remember her telling me, no, sorry. I remember listening as a little boy to my mum and dad speaking once. I was about 12 at the time. They'd just visited my grandmother when she was on her deathbed and she died that, after, that evening. In the afternoon, they visited her in the nursing home and they were explaining how my grandmother, who had a deep faith in Jesus, was on, almost like on the edge of her bed, reaching up into the, into the sky, hands in the air, going, oh, the joy, the joy, the joy, the joy. And she was naming all of her brothers and sisters and, and, and relatives that were there waiting for her in heaven. It's just God had opened her eyes and she got a glimpse into heaven. And she, rather being frightened of going there, was almost reaching out to go there. Well, I saw that in my mother as well. And it just goes to speak, just as that book Imagine Heaven talks about. And Jesus himself talked about, he says, Do not fear, in this world you'll have many troubles or many fears, but do not worry, I've overcome the world and I've gone to prepare a place for you and I will receive you, speaking of that reception that people will have. So we don't need to be frightened, we don't need to worry, because Jesus came at Christmas time to die on the cross at Easter time, that we could know forgiveness, we could know the assurance of heaven when we die. And in an uncertain year of COVID, we can know God's love, God's kindness, God close to you. We can know the reassurance of forgiveness and the assurance of heaven. And Jesus said this, and it's for me and it's for you and it's for everybody. All who come to me, I will not turn away. So I'm going to pray a prayer now. And it's a prayer by which you can come to Jesus just like I did many years ago, and many people in this room have done at different time of their life. You can come to Jesus, and as we pray it, and as we believe it, and as we receive Jesus with absolute sincerity, you can be assured that he will never turn you away, and he will never leave you, and he will be close to you, and fulfill a longing of your heart, and it will be a longing of God's heart, to love you, to be close to you, and never leave you. For he said these words, I will never leave you or forsake you to the very end. So the prayer will come up on the screen, and you can pray it underneath your breath, and you can pray it underneath your mask. But Jesus will hear the prayer of your heart, and he will answer because he says, all who open the door to him, I will come in and he will be in relationship with you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you that you came to this earth as a baby 
to die on the cross as a man to bring me forgiveness. I receive you and your forgiveness now. Come into my heart, come into my life, and be my savior. Give me the free gift of heaven and friendship with you. I turn to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Happy Christmas. And I hope 2021 is a better year for you in many ways. God bless you. Please stand. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth.
Well, let's just stay standing and pray for a moment. Lord, we thank you that in that special night, that holy night, you came for us. And I ask, Lord, that for anyone here who's prayed that prayer, that you, you've come into their life now and that life will begin again brand new and that we need never be afraid. And uh, while we're praying for a moment now, if you have a need for healing, like we heard earlier, where Julian's praying for his friend in the gym, um, we've seen so many people healed online and on Zoom. I'm just to, going to pray for you now for healing. So if you're in the room and anything hurts and you can reach it, put a hand where it hurts. If you're online, put your hands where it hurts. Let's pray now. Lord Jesus, we thank you that when you died on the cross, you died for our healing as well as for all the things we've done wrong. And we ask now, Lord, in your power that you will come and heal people's bodies, that you'll bring your healing power now in Jesus' name. Body be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, those who've been suffering for a long time, we've seen so many people healed after 10, 20 years of illness. I ask, Lord, there's some of you watching here, you've been ill for a long time. I ask, Lord, that you will come now and heal bodies in the powerful name of Jesus. So, Lord, we ask you to release your power now that we see many healings that people will know your love and care on their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Brilliant. Why don't we take our seats then, guys? And band, that was fantastic. Well sung and well played that oh, holy night. Always catches me. Amazing. We give them a round of applause. Fantastic. It's not often in life, do we, where we get, get the chance to sit down and listen to beautiful words and allow God to impact us in such an amazing way. Now, Sarah's prayed, thank you, and Julian, great talk there, really encouraging. What I have here, and this is free for anyone who's like responded, prayed earlier with Julian, this is called Luke and Acts, okay? So we've got the Gospel of Luke and uh, the Acts, which is like the story of the early church, and it's here in a book form. Luke wrote Acts as well. And it is amazing, the stories and people's lives from all walks and backgrounds, the impact of the early church, what Jesus did, you know, through the, the, the gospel of Luke there. It's a fantastic way of reading more, finding out more about, you know, what God wants to do in and through our lives in such a real way. So these will be here at the end. If anyone would like to take away a free copy, please do so. And then there's also a little booklet called Six, and that is like six short kind of little teaching parts which help us through uh, the Bible there and that kind of story. So please come and see Sarah, myself, or Julian. We'd be love to give you uh, one of those later. Great. And um, also, if you've been interested in anything you've learned for new this morning, uh, we always run an alpha course. And if you watch our social media channels, um, we always have alpha running. There'll be one in the new year. And this is a place where you can meet with others to discuss the issues of life, discover a little bit more about faith from the comfort of your own living room. So watch out on our social media, which will come up at the end of the meeting, uh, to join an alpha. You'd be really welcome to join us. Brilliant. And then just to say, Julian mentioned his talk about this book, Imagine Heaven, and I do fully recommend it. I read it a couple of years ago when I was on holidays. Can you remember those days when you could go on holidays? Wasn't that nice? <laughs> Sitting in a pool in the, in, the, in the short end. I can't go in the deep end. I'm not very good at swimming, okay? But I like to read the Imagine Heaven. And what I love about Imagine Heaven, it gives us an insight and a snapshot into what we can look forward to in life. Because I don't know about you, but I want to live my life to the fullness now and enjoy it as best as I can. But it's also fantastic to know to have a snapshot of what heaven is like and the beauty and the love that God uh, has created for us to enjoy. So I do recommend Imagine Heaven. If you can get a copy and have a read of it, it's fantastic. Great. You can order that on Amazon and it will come before Christmas. So why don't you get a hold of one of those? Um, and also, these are all our social media channels. And so it's great to just keep in touch, find out what's happening. And next Sunday, of course, we have our family Christmas service, which we're really looking forward to. So that is next Sunday. And keep in touch with us via social media. Brilliant. Thanks, Sarah. So I just want to introduce now the last and final carol. And it is, O oh, come all ye faithful.
My foot was tapping and everything. <laughs> almost saw. sang, almost Love sang. Well, well, you and I are hoping to join the band, but they just won't let us in. I don't know why. Yeah, no. That's it. We've got we, to keep rehearsing. Yeah, we can't sing and we're getting on a bit. So, <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's right, that. baby, that's right. <laughs> Well, um, this is the close of our meeting now. We just want to say goodbye and thank you so much for coming and being with us. We also want to say thank you to all our sound media and all our band who have been rehearsing for weeks. And because of a little bit of elf isolating everything, some of them have been rehearsing all yesterday and up early here since seven in the morning. So thank you for that too. <laughs> Great, yes, and I must say, I've spotted some very nice Christmas jumpers out here today, so well done, guys, good effort. Yes, I like very it. Nice. Some nice yes. ones. Nice to see such an effort made. Well done. Well, um, we're going to uh, end the meeting in a moment. And um, at the very end of the meeting, we ask you to stay for our COVID guidelines and exiting. Um, but thank you for being with us. We so enjoyed being with you and together online as well. And uh, the band are now going to play us out with our very last song, Christmas. <laughs> Yeah.
thank you so very much, everyone, for coming and joining us online as well. It's been absolutely wonderful to be with you this morning. If you want to just stay in your seats while Sarah will go through the COVID guidelines, but wishing you all a very Merry Christmas. <laughs>